Hi there guys, today we are going to be talking about gas engine performance and troubleshooting. Okay, I've found, uh, I've had a lot of people asking me plenty of questions around gas engines and I wanted to put this video together to help you guys with all your concerns. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about with our gas engines is connections. Okay, and we primarily have three type of connections on our gas engines. First we have electrical connections, then we have fuel connections, and thirdly we have mechanical connections. Let's try to get, take a quick overlook at these three. When we put a plane together and we're using a gas engine, we always have to have in consideration that gas engines are super they're masters of vibration so they really make our entire plane vibrate so we need to always keep in mind that our connections are secure so one of the things that I recommend you guys whenever you have a connection like here for example I just connected two cables that we have a clip to keep that connection secure okay so the way it works is you put that clip over the connection and it's gonna hold it so that it doesn't get out of place okay you can also use zip ties that you will um, put around the cables like let's say on both ends but be careful with the tight how tight you put those zip ties okay so you want to put it uh, strong enough that it is not going to get loose but not that strong that you're going to ruin your cables remember you also have vibration so you can use like um, foam around around the, the uh, wood area where you put in this to protect the cable so always keep in consideration the vibration and protecting your cables from that vibration and the uh, all the parts that the cables are uh, making connect contact with okay so always keep in mind that okay you use a uh, foam zip ties clips and make your connections clean tight and uh, very secure Secondly, we have fuel connections, okay? And remember, when using uh, gas, it's not like glow, so you don't wanna use the same uh, clear tubing that you use for, for, uh, for glow. You need to use something like Tigan, which is that um, uh, yellow looking uh, uh, tubing, okay? And I really, I strongly suggest going through your, all your tubing connections at least once a year because it can really get uh, really uh, tough you know hardened and it may break okay mainly inside the tank where, where you have the clunk a lot of times we have death sticks that are caused by clunks that fall off or that the tubing breaks so um, you know always use the right tubing for your connections on gas engines you want to go with Tigan there's also a black tubing that I um, I've been told that is even better it works even better than Tigan for inside the tank because it doesn't get as hard with time okay so keep your your connections clean always make sure that you know if you have for example uh, uh, a fuel dot that you are going to be pu be pulling you know and you need to leave some extra tubing in there for, to pull out make sure that all of those connections work really well when you are you're pulling that is not rubbing with anything that is going to cause it to break in the fusel keep in consideration the vibration uh, from the gas engine and everywhere those tubings are going out you know if they're going from the tank to the to the uh, carburetor in the engine where is it going through in the in, in the wood i mean is there anything that can rub with it and caught it with the vibration so you know keep it keep all those tubing away from like the muffler canisters and things like that so keep all of that in mind so that you have uh, a good working uh, engine or plane for a long time lastly we have our mechanical connections and same principle guys you know always test everything make sure that you're using the right 
linkages, you know, uh, for gas planes, if gas engines, you want to use really nice, strong linkages, you know, from a brand name like Dubro or things like that. Don't go cheap on that because it's going to, something a little part like that that may cost you anywhere from a dollar to three to five dollars may cost you an entire plane if you you know if you skimp on that so my suggestion is go with uh, in that regards go with quality parts you know on those linkages that will hold for a long time you know test before getting out uh, uh, you know on the field and getting your your plane airborne test all those linkages you know put your radio on go full throttle down you know check what is it is, is what is that servo doing when you use the trim because sometimes we don't take that in consideration so you use the trim and go all the way down is is that servo now binding too strong so well that'll keep your servo you know healthy for longer so keep all those things in consideration and use good high quality stuff uh, for that those little things you know Three to five dollars there's nothing so you, you know use good good quality stuff and always check that there's no binding that there's no rubbing with the wood or any other part uh, you know that is related to the engine like a muffler or anything like that okay now the next topic I want to go over is attachments okay our engines usually will have attachments like muffler canisters uh, propeller and spinner those are the three or four main category of attachments that we can have on our gas engines and what I really want to point out here is a lot of time oftentimes we can buy an engine that comes let's say with a factory muffler but as you know we always want something better so we want to put a pit style muffler in there or we want to add canisters or anything like that and oftentimes when we do that the thickness of the, uh, the attachment, the muffler, the canister that goes on the uh, crankcase sometimes changes. So sometimes you have a thicker material going against the, the crankcase and what that does, it changes the amount of thread on the bolts that go into the crankcase. And I've seen so many people do modifications in terms of getting different mufflers or something like that and using the same factory bolts without taking the time of measuring if that bolt is now going into the crankcase the same let's say with the original muffler you had a quarter of an inch going inside the crankcase in terms of the threads on the bolt on, on threads on the bolt going inside the the crankcase so now you you're using a different muffler and now you only have like an eighth of an inch in terms of the threads going inside that's going to create a very weak connection okay where that muffler with the vibration may break loose and even damage your, your the thread inside your, your crankcase so always take into consideration when you're doing modifications like that that you may have to buy different bolts a lot of time oftentimes longer bolts the same thing goes with props okay let's say you're using certain type of prop and the thickness on the prop is 5 8 like that all of a sudden you switch to a different prop but guess what that prop now is three quarters of an inch thick so it's thicker than the previous one chances are the balls that you were using in the beginning are not going to go in as much into the hub and you're going to have a weak connection so keep that in consideration i cannot stress that enough always check how you know with everything that you're tweaking everything that you're changing in terms of the attachments on your engines how is how are the bolts changing in correlation with that an idea that I'm going to give you guys in terms to how to determine how large of a, of a bolt you can use whenever doing modifications is find a, a tool like this something that can go inside the hole where the bolt is gonna go and um, put it all the way in use your fingernail to mark and then take it out if I measure this now with a tape measure I have about 7 8 of an inch 
Now, I, I always suggest subtract, subtracting about one eighth of an inch. So that'll give me with three quarters of an inch. That means that I can use a bolt like this one that comes out three quarters of an inch out from this surface. I can use, this will be a perfect bolt to use for this connection. It'll give me a tight, good, strong connection with using all the threads from the bolt and from inside the cylinder head. That's what you would want to do whenever doing modifications. You don't want to have a bolt that is going to go inside something like that. That would be a weak and bad connection. Uncertain of those uh, attachments, like the muffler, for example, you may want to use a good thread locker, okay? Because, um, again, the vibration with gas engines is tremendous. And you want to be, uh, you want to play it safe as much as you can. Don't wait for things to happen. Be proactive. Check and double check, okay? So, uh, thread lock will be a good idea in certain parts like a, a muffler. Not on a propeller. I've never really used myself a uh, thread lock on, on a propeller. I've never seen anybody doing it, so it's just on certain parts.